Okay, this is a five minute um, outline of how you might try and engage with context for the AQA uh, literature exam, paper one exam for Macbeth. Um, so basically just giving you an overview of how you can make sure that context is something you engage with in the exam. What do we mean by context? Well, simply showing you know a bit about when the play was written and when it was set. Um, it was written in the 17th century, Renaissance England, so uh, I think about 1604, I think, um, to about 1606, this, this play is being written. Um, and it is set in 11th century medieval Scotland. So it's written in Renaissance England by Shakespeare, but it's set in Scotland. I'm just going to run you through just a few things uh, that we actually mean by context, so the important things about when the play was written and when it was set, and then talk to you about four key quotes that you could link to context. So the first thing on the left is witchcraft. Obviously the witches open the play, um, and it's really important that you understand, although in our culture, in in the UK at the moment, witchcraft is not really seen as something uh, very real. At the time Shakespeare was writing in the early 17th century, hundreds of people were accused and many executed for being witches or for practicing some kind of witchcraft. Whether they were practicing witchcraft is another matter, but many people were accused of practicing witchcraft and uh, being in league with the devil and killed for that. Uh, another part of context which is really important is women and how women uh, were viewed in the Renaissance period and indeed in medieval Scotland uh, when the play was set. So when Shakespeare is writing, women are seen as weaker, they are seen as men's possessions predominantly, and maternal figures. So really, a good woman is a pure woman, a woman who is a mother and who is subservient weaker than her husband. Obviously Lady Macbeth challenges those um, stereotypes of the time. If we go down a bit, uh, kingship was a really important issue in Shakespeare's day. Um, kings had absolute power and were seen as divine and linked with God. So the idea of killing a king would be not only a, a, a criminal act but an act against religion, an act against God. Many kings were seen as having divine powers they could cure and cure and heal the sick. Um, along with that, Christianity, it's really important to realise how Shakespeare's audience were all Christian and believed intensely uh, in the afterlife and in heaven and hell. So part of everybody's day-to-day -day life would be thinking about if they did die, which was a daily occurrence through disease, uh, you know, child mortality, people were visibly in touch with death um, day in and day out in Shakespeare's time. They would have been thinking about what happens to your soul after death on a regular basis. Um, a couple more things. James I, who was the king, he was made king in 1603, so around the time this play is being written, and when it was first performed, it was performed for James I of England. Um, who was previously the King of Scotland and it's really written for him in the sense that it's a warning against what goes wrong in society when you do challenge and kill a king. He was also an intense believer in witchcraft. He wrote a book about it called Demonology uh, and he was paranoid that witches uh, were casting spells against him. Um, so this play and the use of witchcraft in the play was very much um, to flatter and engage James the first. Along with that, what's obviously really important this November as a nation, we we you know celebrate it in some form. But uh, the gunpowder plot. It was a Catholic plot to assassinate James the first, who was a Protestant king, and to blow up Parliament. And trials for that, uh, what was seen as a terrorist act, although it didn't happen. Obviously, the plot was foiled. Trials were held and people were executed for their betrayal of uh, the state and the king. So that's in people's minds. Um, betrayal and 
this idea of threat to the established order. If we then look at the quotations I've listed as important, first one is from Act 1, Scene 5, Unsex Me Here, which is a line that Lady Macbeth says in her soliloquy in Act 1, Scene 5. Obviously means turn me into something that's not a woman anymore. Now, that would have shocked Shakespeare's audience because they traditionally would have seen women as weaker and less ambitious, perhaps, and less um, determined and strong. It also links with Christianity because to unsex yourself, uh, and she's also in, engaging in witchcraft here, she's asking spirits to help her do this, would be going against God's plan. So those who challenged authority, um, stepped outside of uh, their roles in society, would have been seen as deeply irreligious. Um, next quote that, that I've put that's important is from Macbeth's soliloquy in Act 1, Scene 7 where he's reluctant to kill Duncan, who is described as bearing his faculties so meek, I think by, by uh, Macbeth in the soliloquy. He also says angels will plead trumpet-tongued. So he knows that to kill a king uh, is going against God's order and grand plan. So that's really, really important that we realise Macbeth is reluctant, partly because he knows he's going against God. Um, the next quote, a little water clears us of the deed, which is part of that memory palace as well. Um, again, I suppose water purifying, uh, the sort of ritual of baptism and absolution. This idea that, that water could purify you is a, a religious image from Shakespeare's time and indeed a, a significant image in Christianity still. The idea that she thinks just normal water will wipe away the sin uh, is, is obviously clearly meant to shock us um, and a Christian audience at the time would have seen that hypocrisy, that idea that she thinks she can purif purify herself and clean herself of the guilt just uh, as long as nobody suspects she did it. She's ignoring basically that, that God can actually see her. And the last quote, which ties in with uh, Lady Macbeth's downfall, is from her sleepwalking scene, Act 5, Scene 1, I think. Uh, hell is murky. So she's thinking about the afterlife. Um, she is aware of her fate, um, even though she's not admitting it to herself consciously. This is coming out in her sleep, her fears that she will be punished for what she has done. So... Overlooking that, it's just just a reminder to deal with context is to make sure that you show the examiners you understand some of uh, these key ideas and concepts linked to the 17th century when the play was written and uh, the 11th century medieval Scotland when, when the play was set.